Celestina, go ahead and share the video real quick. Let's get more people connected. Emmanuel Edwin, I did see you. Yeah, he can't call it Jokuta. He really beats us that we roll me. He reloads just the movie. Emmanuel, what's up? How you doing? Go ahead and share the video on your page. Let's get to business real quick. By the grace of God. Atinuke Tinti. What's up? All right. Let me change over. All right. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for connecting uh, this morning. Let's get to business. Uh, yesterday, I, I'm not sure maybe yesterday or day before yesterday. I That was yesterday. I started the topic about uh, women. And um, for your information, this week is actually the international week for uh, women uh tomorrow we're going to be celebrating women that's international women's day uh tomorrow march the 8th uh a period where we celebrate women this is not valentine's day this is not about valentine this is not we are not celebrating them because of their sexuality we're not celebrating them because of the ability to make love we're not celebrating them because they can jump around on the bed uh we're not celebrating them because they can actually give us a very nice ringtone no we are not celebrating them because they can cook food. No, we are celebrating their achievements. We are celebrating the achievement of women. We're talking about, you know, in, in the secular world, we're talking about in the ministry, we're talking about politically, we're talking about, you know, intellectually, we're talking about in every field of life. It, it's, not, it's not celebrating them because they are good in bed. All right? So you can do that one on Valentine's Day. But, but what we're doing right now is that we want to celebrate women because they're humans. Because they're human beings. And let me tell you something. They are the same like men. And as, and, and as a matter of fact, they are very precious in the hands of God. More than men. No, no, no. I, I want to tell you the truth. And I want you guys, if you're a woman out there, just put your hands together for yourself, wherever you may be. Right now, listening to me. Put your hands together for yourself uh, because God has created you wonderfully and beautifully. All right, you are a very, very special human being in the hands of God. You are a special creation uh, in the hands of the Lord. And let me tell you something. God, 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 God cannot joke. I can never joke with you. Can never joke with you. So put your hands together, wherever you may be, for yourself. Celebrate yourself as a woman. Celebrate yourself. And if you are a husband out there, celebrate your wife as the mother of your, of your, of your children as your companion, as your partner in the ministry that God has created for you as a, in, in the home, you know, you celebrate, celebrate yourself as a single mother. Celebrate yourself because you're a single mother and you are still alive. Come on, celebrate yourself. You know, I, I want people to always understand that. You know, 
you, you, you have to be proud of who you are. Be proud of your achievement. Be proud of where you are right now. God is taking you places, you know. Understand? This is not, this is not where you're going to end. This is not your ending point, okay? This is only your starting point, okay? You are going higher and higher and higher and higher, state by state, step by step, you know, glory to glory, until you get to that place that God has prepared for you. No, no, don't look at your marital status right now to judge yourself, okay? Don't look at your financial uh, capacity or ability to judge yourself. Don't look at your educational uh, or qualification to judge yourself right now, you know? You see, that's what I'm saying, all right? Anything can still happen in the future. And when we're talking about the future, I'm talking about in one minute time, in two seconds time, in 10 days, in five days, in one day. Okay, that's what we're talking about the future. Anything can still happen in the future. All right? Don't, don't, don't always look at yourself in the mirror and just feel good about the person you're looking at inside of that mirror. That person is actually precious in the hands of God. Precious in the hands of God. It doesn't matter your situation right now, what you're going through. You might have been disappointed many times in relationship, many times in relationship. You must have been actually dumped many times in relationship. You must have been jilted in relationship many times. You must have been, you must have been living in an abusive relationship in your life. Doesn't matter. I, I'm not going to lie to you. Where you're going, you're going to get there. The devil can't stop you. Nothing can stop you. That your husband can't stop you. Your parents can't stop you. Your enemies cannot stop you. It's something that has been ordained. If it has been written about you, surely you will, it will come to pass. It surely come to pass. The Bible says, he said, if sorrow tarries all night, he said, joy will eventually come in the morning. There is a morning time, especially for your life, that the joy of the Lord will surely come in your life. So this is the moment you celebrate yourself. Celebrate. Celebrate for being a woman. It's the most beautiful thing in the entire world. The most beautiful thing in the record of God for you to be a woman is actually the most beautiful thing in the whole wide world. You don't have any understanding. If you if you turn yourself to be a man right now, you will be in my shoe and then you look at women and say, Kai, they are very precious in the eyes of God. Thank God for creating them. Thank God for creating them. The life of Adam couldn't, you know, he, he was he was just living on the surface. He couldn't, he couldn't enjoy his life. He couldn't. There is no enjoyment in life without a woman in this world. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. All right, I, I, I'm not. For a woman who do who, who who does not appreciate them who, who, herself and who she is, that person is naturally. A sinful person, you are actually mean to yourself and you are mean to God. I'm telling you, you are a special being, a special creation in the hands of God. That God can never joke with you. You cannot cry one bit that God will not step into action. I'm telling you the kind of power you have, how precious you are in the hands of God. In the hands of God. You need to go and look at yourself in the mirror, beat your chest, say, I am somebody. Come on, somebody. Somebody type it in there. Say, I am somebody. You are somebody. You are precious to God. All right? Okay? You need to tap yourself in, 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 on the chest and, and tell yourself, I know myself. I am, I am going to make it. I will make it. I, 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 I will make it. All right? And, and don't look down on yourself because you're a woman. Don't look down on yourself because you're a lady. I'm telling you, you are not a second-class citizen. Like so many people have been telling you, a woman is nothing. A woman is a nobody. A woman is only the shadow of a man. They are lying to you. That's the lie from the pit of hell. I'm going to tell you the truth this morning. And the truth this morning is that you are a special creation by God. God created you specially. He didn't just put brick and blocks together. It's a masterpiece. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. All you got to do is just to use your brain. Use your brain. Don't let anybody be borrowing your brain. You to borrow yourself brain. Know who you are. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I am. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. You got to know. You got to know who you are. Then don't ever look down on yourself that you are not the best. You are the best. 
Nobody is the best. You are. It is only you that is the best in the hands of God. You are the most beautiful in the hands of God. Look at you. Pick yourself in the chest and say, I am beautiful. I'm the most beautiful being in this entire world. I'm telling you, when you look at yourself in the mirror, be proud of what you see. Be proud of what you see. God didn't just put block, brick and block together. He said, you are a masterpiece. He, 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 he took time to create, to mold your life. You think your hand just found itself where it is? You think your nose is just standing there like just Dundee United? You think that here is just standing there? No, no, no. God has a purpose for it. He specially, he sat down. He had you on his mind. There is a picture of you in the mind of God when he was creating you. Oh, you don't understand? He created you to be the best. So you are the best. Don't let anybody tell you you are not beautiful. Don't, don't use another person as a standard to your life. Oh, that's, that's the problem. That's the mistake a lot of people are making. That is the mistake a lot of people are making these days. That we look at a picture of somebody because they are using that person as a model doesn't mean the person is beautiful more than you. Come on, man. It's just business. It's just business. You are the best of God. Because the person is tall doesn't mean the person is more beautiful than you. Because the person is yellow purple doesn't mean the person is beautiful more than you. Okay, you are black and you're shining. All right? If you are the kind of a chubby lady, man, oh my God, I'm telling you, you go meet on the bone. You are the best of God. If you're actually skinny, it doesn't mean anything. All right? God created every one of us. He, he, God is a God of variety. He, he, he want to see different things. The tall, the short, the heavy, the thin, the light, the dark. God, God is a God of variety. That guy is an artist. He's an artist. He's a musician too. All right? So when you see a musician, they love varieties. They love good things. He's an artist. All right? So you are the best in the hands of God. Don't let nobody intimidate you. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't let anybody make you to lose your self-esteem. Don't let anybody ruin your dreams for you. You are the best. You know, carry yourself as one. If God won't give up on you, don't give up on yourself. Don't try to be like somebody else. Oh, I want to be like some. No, 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 no. You cannot be like somebody else. You're different. God created you the way you are. He wants to use you the way you are. God wants to use you. Don't allow the standard of this world to ruin your life. You are going to be running and running after the shadow. You won't be you won't you won't become nothing. The plan of and the purpose of this world is for you to run your race without finishing it. So they begin to put standard before you. They begin to put standard before you. If you don't live in this neighborhood, you are not living a life. If you don't make this amount of money, you are not living a life. If you don't look like this, you are not living a life. If you don't drive this kind of a car, you are not living your life. If you don't enter the first class, you are, listen to me. Let me tell you something. The life that you're living is stage by stage, level by level. <laughs> Step by step, level by level. <clears throat> God is the one that is moving you. You are not moving yourself. You have to grow to the levels. You can't jump from number one to number two. No, you have to go through. It's a season in life. It's a time in life. All right? Don't let nobody intimidate you. They can't have your money with their own money. They can't build their own, your own house with their own houses. They can't marry your wife with their own wives. They can't give back to their, your own children with their own children. It is time. When it is time for you to build a house, you will. When it's time for you to buy the best car, you will. When it is time for you to, to marry, you will. Don't let nobody rush you. They are not your standard. Jesus is our standard. And let me tell you something. Time and season, very important. When your time will come, okay, nobody's going to announce that to you. When your time will come, you will not need a prophet to tell you what to do. When your time will come, people will see your glory. Either you say it or you are not saying anything. They will see your glory. Your glory shall be revealed. Okay? It is about your time. When your time is here, I'm telling you, nothing can stop you. You become unstoppable. 
People have been making fun of you for all these years. I've been telling you, you cannot do this. Oh, you can't become this. Let me tell you something. It's because your time has not come. Let them keep laughing because they're going to laugh and laugh, but you're going to laugh last. And he who laughs last, laughs the best. You're going to turn around and say, hey, are you like me now? You know, you will ask them, how do you like me now? Okay, you see me, you saw me when I was still growing, all right? You you condemned me when I was making mistakes. You you, you said, oh, I am not good. Or you said, ah, I don't, I don't fit here. You said, mm, I'm not that educated enough. Oh, you can't speak good English. Oh, you can't do this. How you like me now? How do you like me now that I'm on my way? Going bigger in life. That my time has come finally that you will see the glory of God upon my life. Don't let nobody shut you down. Don't let anybody intimidate you because I'm telling you, <laughs> heaven is your limit. You are going higher in life. Nothing can stop you. All right? Nothing should be able to stop you but yourself. You are the one stopping yourself. You are the one stopping yourself. People are not, they, they don't have the ability to stop you. They have no capacity to stop you. That, that, that's not their responsibility. God has not given a man that authority to stop anyone. It is you because you are listening to the words of the enemy. You are actually basing your life on the standard of this world. No, you are not supposed to look at them. You are supposed to look unto Jesus. You are not supposed to look or listen to them. You listen to Jesus. Whose testimony will you believe? Is it the testimony of God or that of man? Oh, they put you on the scale and they say, oh, you are not good enough. And you believe that? And that's what you're believing. And that is why your life is miserable today. Come on, man. The God didn't give them the power over your life. He didn't give them the power over your life. Your life is hidden in Christ and Christ is the only one who's got authority over your life, not man. All right? I want you to stand tall, be bold, okay? And uh, uh, lift up your shoulders and tell yourself I'm the best of God. Nothing anyone can tell me. I may be a divorcee, but that doesn't matter. I'm still in Christ. A life in Christ is a beautiful life. The moment you are in Christ, doesn't matter your marital status. Tell them to go to hell. Tell them to go and sleep because you are the best in the hands of God. I'm telling you, oh, I don't have children. Do, do that, do, do, does that matter? Let them laugh at you anyhow. They like it because you have an adopted son. That's, that, that's the cup of tea. I'm telling you, you are on your way. They've been laughing at you before, but, but today you're going to tell them, how you like me now? Come on. How you like me now? I'm on my way going higher. You see, in those days, I was, I was a different guy. I was under the making. But right now, I've been made. I'm on my way. How you like me now? I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it is only you that can stop yourself. If you are not stopping yourself, nobody can stop you. And I'm telling you, nobody, even the devil doesn't have the authority to stop you. But yourself. You are a woman with a purpose. You are a woman with agendas. You are a woman standing with God. You are a woman carrying Jesus in your belly. I'm telling you, God created you to be the best. You are the best of God. Don't let nobody intimidate you. You are not a second class citizen. You are not a second class citizen. All right? So look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I am the best. The best of the best. I can achieve great things in life. You don't need your vagina to be the best. Come on, man. Come. You, I'm, I'm speaking to somebody. I'm speaking to one person now. You don't need a vagina to be able to be the best. All you need is Jesus. All you need is your dignity. All you need is respect. All you need is to stand tall and be truthful to yourself. You don't need to be jumping from one bed to another bed, ridiculing yourself and, and demoting yourself and, and embarrassing yourself before you can become the best in life. You don't need that. All you need is God. All you need is to understand the principles of prosperity. All you need to be, is to be truthful to yourself and stand with God alone. Come rain, come shine. Tell yourself, I don't need to be in the hand, in the bed of a man to prosper. You don't need it. You don't understand. You are ridiculing yourself. You are demoting yourself. You are messing yourself up. I'm telling you. You are messing yourself up. And, and this is bringing me to the topic of today. I've actually been, been laying foundation all day by the grace of God. 
Now, as a woman, as a woman that is actually a, 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 an instrument in the hands of God, you are special. You are not supposed to live your life recklessly. You are the mother of all nations. Come on. The Bible made me to understand that Adam said unto Eve, God, he said, you are the mother of all. And we shall call you Eve, the mother of all, of every living thing in life. I'm telling you, women are very important. They're very precious in the hands of God. You don't joke with women. Women must not joke with themselves. You must know who you are. You must understand your assignment. You must know on the platform that God has placed you. You must respect yourself. And you stop jumping all around. The devil knew this. And that is why the devil is manipulating women. All right? Now, what am I going for is that this is the International Women's Week. Tomorrow is International Women's Day. We're going to celebrate women. But I want to lay a foundation at this point in time that women are supposed to be celebrated every day. It's not a kind of a week, week thing. It's not a kind of a once in a year thing. Or maybe it's a Valentine thing. No. Women are supposed to be respected daily. Oh my God. You don't understand. You don't understand the kind of power that God has placed on the, on the life of a woman. That every day, they deserve to be respected. Every day, we're supposed to celebrate them. Every day, we're supposed to look at their face and say, Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for taking all my nonsense. Thank you for cooking my food. Thank you for taking care of my children. Thank you for blessing me in bed. Thank you for not getting angry. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Do you know what women go through every day of their lives? I want you guys that are between, that you are, you are not married yet. You are a brother, you are not married, or probably you are just, you just got married newly. I want you to begin to listen right now. I want you to listen right this moment, okay? Because experience is actually what I'm going to be using right now to teach you so that you will understand that this is not just about sex. Okay. I'm saying something right now. It's not about sex, all right? You, you, why am I saying leko, leko, kiri? You think, why am I, you say, ah, if I catch you, I will deal with you. You will be saying, la, la. If I catch you, you will be super, you will be with me. If I catch you, your legs are going to be, if that is the only thing you know, you are, you are, you are done, you are dead. Relationship is not based upon that. It's deeper than that. All right? The, the woman that you are talking to, oh, I do this, oh, I do that, oh, I do that. A lot of you men don't respect your wife. A lot of you men are there. You treat them like nonsense, like a second-class citizens. You, you don't give them peace. Uh, you, you think it's sex that will bless your life? You think it's sex that will make you to actually prosper in life? No, it is the happiness, happiness of the woman. If the woman is happy, the whole house is happy. If the woman is blessed, the whole house is blessed. If the woman is sad, the whole house is messed up. If the woman is not happy, there is a curse upon that family. I am just saying it point blank. I'm telling it to you the way it is. I'm not sugarcoating it. You will begin to look at your family. Why is everything upside down? There is an idol in your house that God placed there purposely for a reason. That's supposed to bring you joy. That's supposed to bring you peace. That's supposed to ele elevate your glory. But that idol is not happy. You have not been making sacrifices. You have not been treating that idol right. And that is why things are going down in that relationship. But you don't understand. You don't get it. You don't understand the kind of power that God has placed in a woman. You don't get it at all. Let me let me go back a little bit. When God created the heavens and earth, he created the man. We, we, they, they call him Adam. Adam was not supposed to live his life by himself, but God was actually trying to get him to become mature, for him to actually prepare the place for Eve. And lo and behold, Eve was born, was created, brought into the garden. To be able to support Adam in the journey of life. And God said unto them, he said, he said, take dominion, replenish the heart, take charge, multiply. He gave them that order. He blessed them, the two of them, male and female. He created them and he blessed them. God blessed them and he made them to become one and for them to be able to conquer. I'm telling you the truth. So God did not create Eve 
from the girl. He created Eve from an existing man. He took a rib and he took it away. And what did God do? God now begin to think, how can I stop manufacturing people from the ground? And God said, I am going to put my manufacturing company inside the belly of the woman. So God now made the woman to be the carrier of God, of the seeds of God. That God wants to manufacture men, he manufactures them inside of the belly of a, of, 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 of a woman. Making a woman to be very important. Very important. I was formerly thinking, I said, God, what were you thinking about? Are you supposed, are you thinking that when we men want to give back to children, are we supposed to stick our penis in the ground? And then we pour our seed inside the ground, and then we cover it like a seed, and then after 30 days, there will be a baby that will grow out? Was that your plan before? Who are you thinking, God? <laughs> God told me, you don't know me. You don't know what I had in mind. I want people to just start getting out of the ground, just po, 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 everywhere from the ground. But there will be no relationship. But I actually want a relationship. So I began to think the best thing for me to do is to create my manufacturing company as a living body. That we move around that can nurture, that can actually conceive for nine months and nurture the baby. And when the baby is born, there will be love between them. And then she can become the mother of nations. Then I began to think about it. I began to think about it. And I said, Kai, I said, God, that means that my wife is very important to you. He said, yeah, you, you're saying it right. You don't want to mess up. I said, if I mess up, what will you do? He said, ah, you are messing with my instrument of creation. You are messing with my instrument of creation. You can't stop God from creating. God is a creator. He's the one making all these things to happen. And you want to mess up his job, he's going to mess you up. Big time. Big time. And that is why we need to understand that women are very important. We are supposed to reference and then treat them correctly. You are supposed to love them dearly. That's why the Bible says, husband, love your wife. <laughs> I begin to think about it. I say, God, what are you talking about loving your wife? We have sex with them. We buy them gifts once in a while. You know what I'm saying? We talk to them once in a while. Are they not supposed to be there and then just sit down there? God said, no. He said, when you talk about love, is deep. To love somebody is deeper than just you think what you think. He said, love is God and God is love. You cannot love your wife without you becoming God yourself. You have to become Jesus in the land of the living. How do you turn to be Jesus in the land of the living? You have to swallow him. You have to have him on, the, him on the inside of you. You have to be on the inside of Jesus. So when you are in the home, you are Jesus in the flesh. You are representing Christ inside of that home. I said, Kai. I said, so the women are supposed to marry Jesus. I said, yeah, of course. I said, so we have to make sure that we give our life to you so that they can have you. He said, yeah. I, I, I said, so if they offend us, they are offending you. He said, of course. Are you supposed to be mad? So I said, no, sir, because they are not offending me. They are offending you. He said, yeah. He said, what am I supposed to now do? He said, you are going to be my ambassador in that relationship that you will not raise a finger. You will not open your mouth to say anything to that woman until you inquire of me. What will I do in that situation? And I will tell you, if I am your God, I am Jesus living inside of you, I will say, go and sin no more. I said, eh? He said, yes. He said, that is the responsibility of a husband. I said, what do you mean, God? So he began to break it down to me. He said, anyone that we refer to as a husband must actually be a man in Christ. Oh, I said, how about the ones that are not born again? He said, those ones are not husbands. You cannot refer to a person that is not born again as a husband because they cannot know how Christ loved the church. Because the standard that is placed before a husband is that husband love your wife as Christ loved the church. So they cannot understand his soul is deeper than the imagination of men. I say, oh, he said, because God is love and love is God. If you don't have Christ, you cannot love like Christ. If Christ is not in you, you cannot love like him. You can't. It's, it's actually deeper. It's actually too difficult for you to understand that love, if you cannot love like Jesus, then you are not qualified to be a husband. Any man that will love like Christ must be Christ. How do you be Christ? You have to have him. 
Where are the men today? Nowhere to be found. Are they very close to God? No, they don't know Christ. They walk all around the place like a no man's business. No wonder the ones are destroyed. When you find a woman that is not happy, like I said yesterday, when you find a woman that is not happy, and that woman is being asked to come to the bedroom, come to the bedroom for sexual relationship. Let me tell you before God and man, you are actually calling the woman to be punished. The act of sex to a woman that is not happy, to a woman that is carrying a sad mind, is a punishment to that woman. If you're an abusive man, that you have abused the woman all your life, and every time she retires into the bedroom to have sexual relationship with you, is a moment of punishment. Come and ask me. I want somebody to call me. If, if you have that understanding of what I'm saying right now, and you want to break it down to us, why it, why it is a punishment, call this number right now. 405-550-5135. I want to hear from the people. Maybe the people understand what I'm talking about or not. So if you are less busy, or maybe you are not at work, and you can talk, call that number. 405 550 5135. Five. If you are calling from outside of the United States, put plus one in front of it. That's plus one, four zero five, five five zero, five one three five. How will it feel for a woman that is in an abusive relationship to satisfy the husband in bed? I want somebody to talk. I want somebody to call me. Call me, call me, call me. I'm expecting your phone call right this moment. Right this moment. I want I want to hear somebody talk to me right this moment about this topic here for a woman who is in an abusive relationship who is not happy who is not happy very sad in a, in the spirit let's pick up this call let's pick this call hello hello hi pastor Sasha. hi pastor Sasha. good morning good morning yes yeah it's very difficult i'll be honest with you huh. hello can you hear me we can hear you it's always it's always be difficult uh -huh. Because the difficult things to do, a man that just abuses you and you want you to lay down and you know make some love, uh -huh. it's never done. Uh -huh. Because the pain will always be there. Uh -huh. You anytime you want to live, you want to rub your hand over him or you want to come over and come closer to you, you will pain. You, your mind goes straight back. Yeah. To kind of the abuse you just got. Yeah. I just about months ago, weeks ago, no, you can't go to you go up to your bed with differences or have grudges in your mind, and you have grudges in your mind. But when it comes to a bill, uh, uh, no, 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 no woman. If a woman will just lay down on the bed, just come on, do what you have to do, and get off. Uh, so, so the woman is not really present there. Say that again. I said so. The woman is not really present on the bed. Oh. Mind and emotional and anything that has to do with sex and relationship, yeah. she's not the impossible. Thank you very much for calling. God bless you, man. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All right, let's pick this one. Hello? Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Labisi. I'm calling from London. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Sex is between a man and a wife is the highest form of communication. Oh. Now... If if a husband and wife don't have the lowest or the basis form of communication and they go for the highest, it negates the whole purpose of marriage. Oh. I don't know if that makes sense. It so, makes sense. You know, regular conversation like, what are your needs? Men, women are affectionate. Yeah. Men are the, the other part. Yeah. But if those are not in place and they go straight for the highest form of communication, yeah. then anything can come in from that, which is offense. No. Yeah. Different kind of things. Wow. But it's the highest form, so the, the basis has to be set in place. It's set in place. Before they can feel the highest form of communication. Wow. Which is that. Wow. That's that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you very much for calling, man. And God bless God you. Bless you sir. All right, man. Yeah, the number is still open if anybody wants to call in 405-550-5135. Let's hear from women. Let's hear from men also. What do you think about it? Okay, for a woman that is in an abusive relationship, a woman that is not happy, and you're asking her to come on the bed, 
How will your hand feel? How will your hand feel on her? How will your leg feel when you're lying down on top of her? How will your Mr. T even feel inside of her? You know, let's pick this up. Let's pick this. Hello? Hello? Hello, Pastor. Yes, hello. hello Pastor. Yes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you. Good job you are doing. We thank God, ma'am. Let me share my let me share my experience with you. Go ahead. My experience, sir. When I got into United States, my husband wanted to me go to play. Can you speak up a little bit, Mama? Okay. I said when I get into United States. Yes. Are you hearing me now? Yeah, we are hearing you. My husband don't want me to talk to anybody. He don't want me to associate that they don't pollute me, they will do this, they will do that. That has been his complaint. So I'm not happy with the whole situation. Like, I'm not just happy. It's not that, you know, it's kind of abusive on one side. But it's not, it's not that abusive. Like, he just don't want me to mingle because it's not a social thing. Like, he don't socialize with anybody. Yes. So because of that, I'm not happy just because of that. Pastor, I'm telling you, I'm not enjoying sex. It's all true out. Like, mm. for the past four or five years, until I got my citizenship, yeah. and I called this guy, I don't know what is going on. I'm not happy with marriage. Let mm. me be me. This is not me. Mm. Let me choose. Just let me be me. Like, it was like, oh, you want to be you? So what, what's going on? I said, I don't need anything from you. If you want me to stay in this marriage, it is you that will make me stay. Mm. You have to change your attitude. Let me be me. That's when my husband and I realized that maybe he has not been doing something that is right. Yeah. Pastor, since that day that we thought those stuff out, like we took everything out, oh my God. Mm. Oh my God. I've never had any of this in the fall. Like, wow. just, just our sex. Oh. Just our sex. Mm. But when we took things out, that like, it made me be me. Like, I'm now myself, like, I can do anything. I want to do. Yeah. I've been working, I've been doing everything right. But since that day that we iron things out, that my mind is free. Because I'll just have been born the two going on. I can't mm. do this, I can't do that. Yeah. It's not like, I was like, God, but since then, Pastor, yeah. everything is fine. I was yeah. like, where is this coming from? I told him, what's, what's happening? Mm. Where did you get all this from? Yeah. I, maybe I've been doing that because I've not been seeing too long. Yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not, I don't even feel sexual. Mm. That's my feeling. Thank you. Pastor, Thank you very much, my sister. God bless you. Really All right. Really All right, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? 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 All right, this person is not talking. All right, the telephone number is still open. I'm telling you, we are going to be dealing with this topic today by the grace of God. You know, so many women, you know, a lot of people, you see, we are talking about the International uh, 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 Women's Week. We are going to be celebrating women tomorrow. Okay, let's pick up this. Hello? Hello, Pastor. Yes, hello. Hello, Pastor. Okay, um, my, my opinion about this is this. Um, Hello, we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. There's no union of the body without the heart acceptance, you know. So, if you are abusive and my heart actually hates you, I will not have a good union with you. I can sleeping with you is like rape. There's mm. no union of the body without the heart acceptance. My heart has to accept you first. In order for me to have a, a relationship with you as far as sex is concerned. Yeah. Okay. Mm, thank you. That's your communication. All right. God bless you. Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Yeah, hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, this is Pastor Sholasho. Yeah, this is Pastor Sholasho. You want to contribute? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, um, I just want to say that uh, it's a very good topic. Uh, this thing you're talking about, I had it just uh, about a few weeks ago. Wow. Uh, it, it got to an extent that uh, he, I, emotional and mental abuse, if I may say that, we're not physically actually. Yeah. 
But you know, emotional and physical abuse has been going on for years. So anytime you want to speak with me, I just because the uh, I just let him do it. Just mm. do it and go. Mm. But the point two weeks ago, he even had to slap my hands both sides. Uh, that, that means that that means that is physical abuse there too. Yeah, he slapped my hand both sides like you are not holding me. And I'm just like he wants to satisfy himself, he does it and he gets up. So he, he and he, he doesn't realize it over the years. And sometimes when he sees me cry, he makes no sense to him. Oh. He sees himself as the as the as the, as the big man, as the all in all, I'm an African man. You know, I'm not abusing you and stuff like that. I've been through it. Mm. Oh, you know, mm. all of the abuses you can think about. So, it's how do you feel? How do you feel when you guys are having sex? Do you, you know, after all this, how do you feel in your body? I don't feel connected. I don't. I I let him have his way just for me to have my, just for him to, you know, let me be. Otherwise, if I don't let him, then another. In another line of trouble, oh. you know, keep fighting me in the house, not supporting me with the children and stuff. So if I let him do it, I just let him do it. Mm. You not know, that I'm connected. You just you, know, you just let him do it anyway. I just let him do it anyway, but no, nothing, no connection. All right, thank you very much for calling, man. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, man. Is he right? Is he right for you to just let him do it? Is it right for you to please him? Okay? You know, uh, these are the stuff that we're supposed to ask, questions that we're supposed to ask ourselves. As a man and as a woman, are you as a man, are you supposed to do it anyway? When you are actually in the home and you notice that your wife is not happy and she's actually sitting down there not happy and you, 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 and you are saying, okay, I still need it. You have to give it to me. I have to still do this. I have to do this with you and all kinds of stuff. Even though you know it, that you have been abusive, even though you know it, that the woman has not been happy. Are you supposed to still do it? Even you as a woman, are you supposed to still allow him to do it? Or because you feel like, okay, he's going to start another trouble, or maybe he's going to go outside and have sex, sexual relationship with another person outside, are we supposed to still allow them to do it? You know, these are, these are the questions that we're supposed to ask. Let's pick this call here. Hello? Hello? Can you turn the computer off? We are hearing too much noise. Yeah, this is Basushola, yeah. Okay, okay, yes. Yes, I'm just adding the contribution to what you were talking about. Okay. And all that. Um, definitely, it is good to let your wife do it. It is really wrong. And it's not just wrong emotionally. It is also wrong um, scripturally. Okay. You know, uh, I was so surprised one day when I was doing a study... And I found out that even in the Hebrew, a break law, in the Jewish law, if a man, and I'm going to read some of the, the, the research I did, that a man must never force himself upon his wife against her will. Yeah. And then it says, on the contrary, conjugal relationships should always be with her full consent. Yeah. So that is, so if she he has just been abused, like if the man abuses the wife, which is even wrong in the first place, and now you want to have sexual relationship with her. You're raping her. That is not sex. That is not intimacy. That no. has become rape. Because uh. a woman does not go into such relationship yeah. like that. It's not physical for a woman. It's more emotional. So what you're doing is you're depriving her. And so it is emotionally, physically, and even spiritually wrong. Thank you. Thank you very much, my for, for this uh, stuff. God bless you, man. You're welcome. Hello? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yes, sir. Um, I just want to give you some um, few uh, views about what is going on in terms of... Um, can, can you speak up a little bit so that the people can hear you? Okay, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me now? We can. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Um, this is a situation that I am going through like currently. I've been married for almost five years. And it involves emotional abuse, you know, even physical at times and even, you know, psychological abuse. And this has been going on and uh, I've been always unhappy. And any time, you know, he requests that he wants to have sex, if I turn it down, he makes the house living hell, like living hell. Wow. And 
you know, it's a situation whereby I want to opt out. I've been trying to, you know, wanting to talk to you, sir, about this issue, but I'm still here. And that's why I'm just calling to, you know, give you my own experience so far, mm. and that's what is really going on, sir. Wow. And I really appreciate the fact that you brought up this topic. There are times I cry my eyes out, you know, depressed and whatever, you know, even family, they want me to opt out, but I'm still here. I don't know, sir, but that's just my experience right now. All right. I think we're going to actually talk. We need to talk in private. Uh, we'll talk about you in private later. Uh, you can give me a call later and then we can talk about it. Okay. All right, thank you very much for calling. All right, sir. Bye bye. You see what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? You think, oh, Pastor Jola is just bringing up uh, uh, topics that are crazy. Oh, he's just probably, Pastor Jola is just talking nonsense. Oh, ka, 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 ka. and then, oh, Pastor Jola is not taking us to the Bible. Pastor Jola is not preaching from the Bible. Pastor Jola is not preaching like every other pastor. If I've been preaching like every other pastor, do you think there will be any kind of solution in your life? Do you think there will be marital bliss? We have to call the spirit the spirit. We have to beat the devil out of our relationships. All right? We have to beat the devil out of our relationship. All right? So many things are happening. Men are no longer respecting their women. Men are no longer respecting their women. I'm not saying women are saints. I'm not saying, oh, women don't commit crime. They don't commit sin. Or they are actually very, you know, they are always straight. No, they're not. No, they're not. But do you know, one funny thing that I, I see that people do is that they believe that, okay, they bought a slave. You have not bought a slave. That's a human being like yourself. That's, a, that's, a, that's God's creation. Like, like, like the way he created you, he created them. And then you saw her, you were the one that invited her and you said, will you marry me? Like I seem to say, you understand marriage. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love you. I'm going to reference you to the end of my life. Okay, that is, 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 is that, that's what I believe that you 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 had at the back of your mind when you were kneeling down and saying, "Will you marry me?" That is exactly what I thought you had in mind. All right, we have been hiding this stuff for a long time. We couldn't talk about sex in the Christian home. We couldn't talk about marriage on the altar. We couldn't talk about anything in church. Oh, we have to just continue to pretend like everything is all right. Oh, we say, oh, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Listen to me. They had to bring people to Jesus that are sick. They identified that they were sick and then they came unto him. And then he was able to heal them. If they have been pretending and they're staying home and say, oh, we are here. We are here. We are using faith. We are using faith. They will die in that situation. They will die there. So it is, it is time for us to call the spade the spade. All right, for us to be able to look into stuff. Now, let me tell you this. When you are in a relationship and the woman is not happy and you're asking the woman to come and have sexual relationship with you, all right, now she is not interested. Does she have the right to say, I'm not interested? Of course, yes. Of course. 1,000%. Okay, oh, but, 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 but Pastor, Bible says our body don't belong to her, that the body belongs to me, my body don't belong to me, my, my body belongs to her. Oh, yo, now, now you can quote that scripture because you are the one that is affected. Ah, Ulenia, you are a thief. The last time, did you remember when she said, Oh, I need you in bed? You said, oh, Leave me alone, I want to watch TV, I want to see You didn't know that time that your body belongs to her. It is now that she is now not, not happy and she doesn't want sex. And now you are the one now quoting that scripture. Only you are eating. You supposed to be oh yeah, come no like by Mary. I won't blah la la call no qua capita wala to no come like by yana yana. Only she won't you egg bank of banco. You know, you see now you know how to quote scriptures. You know how to quote scriptures. Now the issue that is in this stuff is this. Listen to me. Okay? Now, when you are in a relationship. If truly you are married, though, I'm not talking about stupid stuff that you guys are doing right now. If truly you are married, okay, you have no right to deprive your wife's sexual relationship. Likewise, she doesn't have any right. But the issue is this. You cannot have sex in the midst of situation. You have to first of all deal with the situation first. Before you can actually be present. It's just, it's just unfair. You know why I say it's unfair? Okay, now when a man is not happy, a woman cannot have sex with him. 
Because Okwa Olele, the penis will be dead. The man is not happy. The penis is not happy. If the penis is not happy, the penis is not going to be erected. There won't be any erection. The penis will be down like this and be looking at you like, yeah, what you want to do? What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? That's what the penis is going to be telling you. But it's just a fear that even if a woman is not happy, there is no way the vagina can close up. I didn't mean there is a way the vagina can just lock up. I said vagina is saying no road. That no matter how you try it, you can't put anything there. Ah, uh -huh, it will be good. But God didn't do it like that. I said like when the vagina is so, so mad, it will just lock up. And nothing can penetrate it. But it's not like that. So when the woman is still not happy, the woman is so sad, you as a man can still force yourself, in, force yourself into her. And then you just bring the banana and just put it in, you rub it up and then rub it up and then bang! And you bang it in this. If the woman is not secreting the liquid, the lubricant, you go and put water. Or you put your, you spit in your hand and put it there. And then you say, ah, oh, I'm going to do it. And then you do it. Alright? And you do it. And you don't understand one thing. And the thing you don't understand is this. That that woman, you are, being, you are punishing that woman. That's a big time punishment. That you are actually doing for that woman. Big time punishment. Number one, your hand is irritating her. Your breath is irritating her. Your whole body is irritating her because she doesn't want to around her. You are crazy. You are stupid. At that point in time, she don't need you at all. But, but no, 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 no. You force yourself on top of her. She has to just wait there. And then she allows you to rub your hand on her breast. And you put your mouth and you are pulling the nipple. And you, are, and you are scraping the nipple on the head. And she is not feeling you, Mr. Olusi. She is not feeling you, okay? Mr. Orieti. She is not feeling you at all. You are just there. Oh, because you go, go, go crazy, crazy. Oh, five, oh, five. Then you not got angry. He said, oh, 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 do not. Oh, do why, why are you not, why are you not, why are you not making us? Why are you not making any sound? Oh, am I might do you, I might just wasting my time. You are wasting your time. She is not going to make any sound. You know, make it all the oh, can twist the only onion, oh, twist there. But boy, oh, sister, it's not working. The woman that you are sleeping with is a dead person. It's just like you are sleeping with a dead person that don't have no feeling. You are the one that killed the feeling. The feeling is not there anymore. Okay, it is not there anymore. Okay, that's the stuff. Oh, but you can turn it here and turn it here and turn it upside down, pull it anywhere you like, you will see nothing. Battery is really cool. The battery is dead. Hundred percent dead. You killed it. You need a battery charger. Oh no, one more cause the battery charger like the boy. There is no battery charger in your neighborhood. You can't buy a new battery. To buy a new battery is a very expensive thing, and that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to buy a new battery. Oh, what? Now you are putting it in. You are forcing her to do this now. Oh, 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 you are still angry. The woman that you have been abusing, you have been abusive towards this woman. You have been beating her. You have been talking nonsense to her. And you say, hold me, hold me. Which I hold you? Are you holding you? If I'm that woman, if I hold my yale, my yale, I will make you bring your back. You, you're supposed to go and grow your nail. Let it be very long. While I file here, you will file your nail. You file it and make it pointy. Make it pointing like this. And so, whenever he say, hold me, hold me, you hold him and just catch him on the back. He say, hey, are you not the one that say, hold me? I will scratch you. Mark, I will put my nail inside of his body. Let blood come out. Idiot, Mr. Lucy. He said, that's the stuff. You, 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 you'll be there, you want to force yourself on a woman. And the woman is living in hell. The woman is living in hell. All right? And you just don't care. You're supposed to care. You're supposed to care. You're supposed to care. One woman called me one time. He was like, oh, Pastor Zola, do you know, I'm not really happy in this relationship. I don't know why I'm still here. I said, so what's been happening? He said, Pastor, you don't understand me. The man will force me. I'm not happy. He said, put your mouth on me. He said, I have to put my mouth on his penis and then do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. He will say, oh, yeah, lick my ball. And we, we, we hold his penis up like this. It will make me to lick the ball and do all kinds of stuff. And then he said, lick my yash. And then I will say, oh, I'm not leaving your yash. Why would I be licking your yash for? I said, you can't marriage over if you cannot lick my yash that's it that's it though i said ah. can you give me that stupid man's phone number he said ah, please but also don't call him more if you call him now it's going to be the end of my marriage i said let the marriage end 
You are not in marriage at all. This one that you are in, you are in the, in the prison. That is slavery. slavery in it. Do you know the meaning of what you are, where you are? That's slavery. Uh, you're telling me you don't want me to deliver you? I want to set you free. Give me the phone number of the stupid man. Let me talk to him like a real man. I want to talk to him like a real man. Okay? I won't, I won't be annoyed. I will talk as a real man and say, hello? Hello, please. Is this Mr. Olusi? But we will speak. I say, oh, yeah, say me, Lord, we will speak. Tobalesi, man. Who you are wearing? Timba, I'm bailing. If I come to your house, you will go to me. Me, Mose, my ambassador on here. That's why I, my ambassador, like a gentleman. I will talk to him like a gentleman. I won't talk to him like anything. He will love me. He, he, will, he will love me. Okay? So, these are the things a lot of people are going through. They're just going through in relationship. The woman is not being lubricated because she's not presently in the relationship. And you don't understand. Friction is all what we are doing when we are doing intercourse. The penis is going through to the productive organ, passing through the vagina, straight into the, you know, in, into the reproductive organ. It's creating friction on the walls. It's creating frictions on the walls. And at the end of the day, the man is enjoying it because of the, lubri the, the lubrication there. It's making you to slide and you go in and then the excitement will come and before you get to know it, you're going to come and then you come. All right. So when you come, you feel peace. And likewise, the woman also is the lubricant that is coming out. We make her to enjoy it as you are penetrating it and going in. You are eating the G spot, doing whatever it is that you're doing. She's enjoying herself. Also, your hand is working magic. Your lips is working magic. Everything is working because of one thing. The two of you are happy. She's respecting you. You are respecting her. All right. You will be able to enter into cloud number 26. Then from 26, you go straight to cloud number 55. From 55, you enter into cloud number 96. And then you won't believe yourself the way things are going to be working inside of that place. You will, you will, be, so, uh, you will be so amazed how your thoughts can set her on fire. You'll be so amazed how your tongue can create effect in her life. All right? I'm, I'm not kidding. You'll be so amazed that you can just whisper one thing into her ears and, and she will shake. You will be so amazed. It is because there is a communication. There is a channel right there. The two of you are in love, number one, and you are respecting the woman and the woman is respecting you and the two of you are actually on the same platform. You guys, you promote love before you get to know it. She is actually going to open up, not just physically. You are going to have sex with her physically. You are having sex with her emotionally and at the same time, spiritually. The three level of love making is going to be complete. And then you will take yourself to a higher level. I'm telling you, you cannot come back out until you guys are done. And then you'll be so, so satisfied that you lie down beside each other and you just hold each other. And then you can talk all day long. And you can talk all day long. Okay? And, and that's what they call love making. That's where people should get to. It's not this slavery. This slavery period. You know, where we are. That women are going through so much. They are not being celebrated. We treat them as a second class citizens. We treat them just like an, like a, like an object. And they are not. They are not objects. They are humans. They are the best of God. Okay? They're very important to God. You don't want to treat them badly. You know, this is uh, this is the International uh, Women's Week. Tomorrow we are celebrating them. And on Sunday we're going to be celebrating them at my church, the Lighthouse Christian Center in Brooklyn. We're going to be celebrating women. Alright? And, and we're going to be talking about great things about women. Women are constantly growing women are contra, const, constantly uh, uh, moving higher and higher in all fields of life women are very intelligent they are, they are very very intelligent okay and, and they are becoming ceos you know you know i, I just love them I, I celebrate those women that are ceos women are becoming pastors 
I celebrate those ones that are becoming pastors. You know, women are becoming business owners. They are becoming, you know, great teachers and book writers. They are becoming uh, great motivational speakers. Uh, women are becoming, they are becoming great things in life. Great, 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 great. All right. Now, they are, they are, they are just building up. Okay. So, I, I celebrate women. I celebrate them. I, I thank God for their lives. I thank God for where God is taking them to. And I thank God for women that are created by God who are well behaved, who are going places. All right. So tomorrow we are going to be celebrating you uh, here on my network. It's going to be in the studio because I'm going to be playing music and I'm going to take phone calls also. I, I want women to share uh, their life stories with me. Uh, I, I'm not talking about your marital stories. I'm talking about your achievements. Uh, you started from nothing uh, and now today you are registered nurse. Uh, you started from nothing and today you are a professor. Uh, you started from nowhere and today you are a minister. Okay, I want to hear the journey so far. You're okay. Let's celebrate your achievements. You know what I'm saying? So women are not just sex objects. Okay, they are, they are instruments of God. They are instruments of God. And, and that's what I want them to always remember. You are greater than just your vagina. Your vagina is nothing compared to the kind of knowledge, power, ability that God has given unto you. Don't just focus on your vagina. You are more than that. All right? Go home, sit down, and tell yourself, I am greater than just a vagina. Don't let anybody see you just as a vagina and say, okay, oh, is she not just a woman? Or just a woman? That's not what I'm saying. When the Bible say just a woman, that's not what they're saying, you know. They're saying, is it not just a vagina? Is that not the whole stuff? That's all. You know, but you are not that vagina. You are bigger than that. Vagina is just the reproductive organ God gave unto you. Just like he gave a man a penis. Okay? So you can become anything you want to be in life. You can become anything that you want to be in life. Okay? You can be greater you know, that where you are, all you need is just to have a different mindset. All you just have a different mindset. I have a mindset of a go-getter. Someone that wants to get there. I want to get there. I'm still hungry. Become hungry. Become very, very hungry. So that you get to your point of destination. Don't sit there. Don't pity yourself. Don't find somebody to pity you. Don't let the family pity you. Don't let your husband pity you. Plan your life as you're planning with your husband. If your husband is not planning with you, plan for yourself. All right? Plan for yourself. Don't sit down there and be pitying yourself. Don't be looking for prophet to tell you what is wrong and what is not wrong. All right? You are the one that's supposed to grab the bull by the horns. And then you ride that, horse, that bull like a champ. All right? It is your responsibility. It is not God's responsibility to do that. God is not going to come down and do it for you. He has given you the ability. He has given you the know-how. All you got to do is just to put yourself to work. Don't pity yourself. You are not the only one in that situation. Every one of us are passing through. Don't believe it's just only you. We are only managing our own. And we are going through in that situation. We are not allowing the situation to tie us down. Because the situation is not supposed to tie you down. It's supposed to move you. All right? That situation is supposed to move you and push you. It's not supposed to tie you down. If you tie, if you get tied down, it is not the situation that is tying you down, but yourself. It's your mindset that is tying you down. But if you can get up today, if you can stand on your two feet today and say, uh-uh, I can make it. I can get it done. I'm telling you, that situation will flee. Because the situation is only there to warn you. The situation is only there to scare you. The situation is only there to show you that you are lacking. The situation is supposed is also to show you that you are stagnant. The moment you act against it, the situation will vanish. And more other situations are going to wait for you in the future because God is trying to redirect you. He's trying to push you. He's trying to take you to your point in destiny. He said, I know the thought I have towards you is a thought of good, not of evil, to take you to your expected end. Let me tell you something. That journey... It's not free of situations. Situations, God will use situations in life to mold you and to take you to your point in destiny. To your point in destiny. May the God Almighty bless each and every one of us. May you enjoy the best of God. May God bless you in and out of your life. May you become a blessing to other people. 
your marriage will stand and not fall. For you that guys that are divorced, the Lord God Almighty will restore you. You are going to find another man. You are going to find another woman in the name of Jesus. For you guys that are asking for the fruit of the womb, it is done already in heaven. Receive it in Jesus' name. The Lord God Almighty will give you a new job. The Lord God Almighty will give you peace all around about you. In the name of Jesus, the strength to carry on shall be released upon your life. In Jesus' name, I prophesy upon your life this morning that it will not be difficult for you. You will achieve great things, even in no time, with less effort. Little efforts, great result. In Jesus' name. God bless you. And have a beautiful and wonderful uh, 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 Thursday morning. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. If you have any questions for me, feel free to call me. If you need counseling, feel free to call my number. Uh, I will counsel you. But listen, counseling is not free, yo. Don't call me. I'm a saying story, yo. It's not free. I charge. I charge to counsel. <laughs> this is what I do for a living. But you carry me go front like I'm number one. Just you like sunshine on my face. Thirsty so and to see this life not on my tongue. But you carry me go front like I'm number one. Bowling in the spirit, yeah. flying with anointing. Swagger so the divine, definitely for fronting. Jesus got me. Jesus got me. Jesus got me. Yeah. Bowling in the spirit, Ooh. flying with anointing. Thank you guys. So divine, for fronting. Jesus got me. Jesus got me. Now. Jesus got me. Old as a lion, gentle. Thank you, guys. Got my man on the beats, on the beat. Got my man on the beats, on the beat. Old as a lion, gentle as a dove. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Got my man on the beats, on the beat. Don't, don't forget, I'm going to be in Tennessee. I'm going to be in Tennessee April 22nd, 27th, sorry. And I'm going to be in New Jersey. I'll be in New Jersey by the grace of God. Uh, May 4th. The 4th of May, I'm going to be in New Jersey by the grace of God. If you go on my page, you're going to see the information there, the address uh, of the, I mean, the place I'm going to be, the date I'm going to be there. Tennessee and New Jersey is on the line. London is on the line also in May uh, by the grace of God. So, but May 4th, I am going to be in New Jersey. And uh, I am going to be in Tennessee, by the grace of God, in April 27th. And before you go, I'm going to be in Maryland this month. I'll be in Maryland this month. The last Saturday of this month, I think is March 22nd, 27th also. I'm going to be in Maryland. I'm going to be in two venues. Two venues, by the grace of God. You're going to see it on my page by God's grace. Maryland, two places this end of the month by the grace of God. I'm going to be in a redeemed Christian church and I'm going to be in one celestial church by the grace of God this month in Maryland. So join me this month in Maryland by the grace of God. In April, you're joining me in Tennessee and in May 4th, you're joining me in New Jersey by the grace of God. So you're going to go on my page. You're going to see the address of my page. In New Jersey, I'm going to be at the uh oh my god christ life bible church christ life bible church in new jersey by the grace of god okay you guys must be there must be there by the grace of god meet me there meet me in tennessee meet me in maryland this month yeah the date of of, of the london we're going to be deciding today by the grace of god but it's going to be in the month of may May, I will be in London. May, I'm going to be in London. Precious Solari, let me know what you want me to help you for. On the beat, hey. Got my man on the beats on the beat. Oh, just want to flow in the spirit. That's our father is the spirit. Yeah, Precious Solari, leave me an inbox message. Precious Solari, leave me an inbox message and let me talk to you about it, whatever it is that you want me to do. Send me an inbox message. Ruth Ajiboku, 
I'm going to come to Atlanta, Georgia if you are going to plan it. If you can put yourself on the line to plan it, get some people that live in Atlanta together and you guys can actually plan it, I will come to Atlanta. All I'm going to do is just to advertise it for you guys. I will get more people to connect and then we come to Atlanta, Georgia. All I do more care, five day on me. Of course, so so go to my go to my page. All right, uh, leave me an inbox. I will send you the address of the place I'm going to be in Maryland at the end of the month, so you can see me. All right, guys, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and God bless you. Mwah. All right, let's listen to this next song. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yes, this is your boy JFK. Mm. And I want to thank those ones that called in. Those ones who called in, thank you very much for calling. It was beautiful. He came one day, I did come up from my house. I did go up, I did go my office. Carry my motto, I did do it. Just like that, my breaking face. My breaking face, I can't come up the road. But because of Jesus, I know who you are told. But because of Jesus, I know who you know, I know, yeah. Jesus never fell, never fell, Jesus never fell, never fell. So if you guys want me to come to Atlanta, let that sister leave me an inbox message. Leave me an inbox message and I will communicate with you. We're going to talk. We're going to decide what to do with Atlanta, Georgia. We're going to put it together by the grace of God. But just leave me an inbox message. Let me chat with you. All right, bye.